Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Let me introduce you to our panel. Up in our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett, a pilot in the state of California. (laughs) <laughs> that was that was a pitiful scream too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like I call my cat Squeak as a, as, a, as kind of like a, a nickname because uh, she she doesn't make much of a noise. She just kind of squeaks at you, you know. <laughs> so we have this squeak. Was, now we have this squeaking eagle of freedom yeah, here. <laughs> squeaking eagle. <laughs> yep. That's what you do. You know, and and uh, by the way, I'm all confused now. Last show, we were switched. And so now uh, it's like I'm looking to the left, and there I am. And Leon's to the right. Now I'm all confused. <laughs> Our <laughs> eagle has been disoriented, yeah. and, and yes. government yes. is just squeezing the life out of him with these lockdowns. So, you know, oh, we need to yeah. end these lockdowns now, clearly. You know, yeah. let's save our, our screaming eagle of freedom. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> now, in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite. Last word in liberty, he is a retired engineer in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Before we get into the show real quick, I wanted to say if you had any comments or questions during the show, you can send them to counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. Um, <clears throat> we'd also love to hear from you if you have any experiences where you've lost your job or your business has been shut down related to COVID or riots. Um uh, and also, too, if, if you're somebody who's uh, uh, considering leaving the state of California, uh, we've interviewed a few people regarding that, and we'd love to hear your perspectives of why you're leaving. Um, <laughs> that seems to be a, a pandemic uh, these days I've, as well. Yeah, um, you know, I've, I've noticed one thing, though. Jason never says what his occupation is. <laughs> his occupation what? is the host. Today, the I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> the host with the most. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, the most, with the most, with the most what? With the most, the most what? Exactly. The most, the most topics to discuss for the day. <laughs> <laughs> we better get started. <laughs> so let's jump right track. into this right now. <laughs> so uh, w- w- one of the big things related to all this COVID lockdown nonsense that we've been going through is government stepping on religion. That's one of the things we really haven't had a lot of chance to talk about that on this show. We've touched on it a few times. Well, uh, recently the Supreme Court stepped up and slapped down some of the uh, some of the nonsense coming out of Andrew Cuomo in New York uh, on uh, essentially uh, capping uh, capacities on religious services. Um, <clears throat> and you know, it, it's it's uh, certainly we can understand that you know uh, you have a group of people coming together and it's more likely to spread. And I think everybody understands that. But you know, if you're government and you're going to at the same time allow a bunch of people to get together and and advocate or protest something <laughs> that is in your political benefit, which is essentially what Cuomo has been doing all along in New York, and a lot of these uh, big mayors who've been stepping on religion and while allowing people to congregate for. Uh, you know, to voice their opinions on whatever political issue that benefits, uh, it, essentially, I mean, let's just say it, I mean, the left, uh, that, because that's, that's where almost all these are. Uh, it's just outrageous. And so the Supreme Court has finally stepped up and said this as well. Uh, and they said that, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, in our Bill of Rights, this is a constitutional um, uh, guarantee that we have the right to get together and assemble uh, for for religious purposes, and so <laughs> that is uh, you know word the word from the Supreme Court. You guys have any thoughts on that? Well, I think it's the right decision, and uh, it, it puts the onus of prevention of transmission of the, this disease, if, the, if that's even possible. Of course, uh, highly questionable about that on the uh, religious. Uh, facility and the, the people that control it. And so, you know, if, if everybody wants to go in there and and push each other around like they do on the basketball court or the football field without mass, if they want to do that, those people that go to church and hug and kiss and slobber and breathe all over each other, then so be it. But uh, 
And yeah, okay, so now they're going to get COVID. Now they're going to spread it to some poor, innocent little person standing in line at the Walmart that's open because you can't go to the mom and pop store that's closed. So you go to the Walmart, and there you are, and you get COVID from the from the bad person that went to church and got too close to somebody else. And now everybody's spreading it all over everywhere and so on and so on and so on. And that's the gist of the thing, but I'm sorry. I think it's what the reality is, is that these people at the religious uh, congregations are gonna, they're gonna distance enough and wear masks and they can do 18 different things. They can have the things outside uh, inside with ventilation, this, that, the other thing. There's uh, lots of ways they can do it responsibly that they, they don't have to be told what to do. And there you have it. So I think it's a good decision. Um, and I agree. It's a good decision. And um, I mean, the, the bottom line from, from the court's decision is we got to learn to manage the risk, okay? Because we cannot have the government saying that when Black Lives Matter and when Antifa goes out there right. and protests, sometimes there's most world peaceful protests, that is okay. That's all right. We can, we can allow those things. But we cannot allow people to peacefully gather for religious services. There's some major disconnect there. I mean, worship, you know, religion, it's a constitutional right, uh, peace, peaceful assembly. And also, free speech, which is protesting, is also a, a constitutional right. Why is the government making a distinction between the two? By allowing one and, 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 and disallowing the other. So I think the, the, the Supreme Court did a very fantastic job on this particular decision. And I hope they continue to slap these governors and put them <coughs> back in their place, which is at the back of the bus. That's where they should be, all of them. Yeah. All righty then. Well, this is one thing, too, where, you know, when we look at the uh, potential legacy of Trump, you know, as we're, we're not quite sure <laughs> if it's uh, if it's uh, done being written at this point. But um, I, I think this is one of these areas where, uh, you know, his presidency has made a difference, at least with respect to his court, uh, court appointees, because this issue was dealt with, I believe, uh, uh, earlier in the year. Uh, yes. before the appointment of Amy Coney Barrett and uh, his, his most recent appointee. And they, they ruled the other way where they said that, you know, essentially, uh, you know, it was in the state's interest to, uh, to limit these kinds of gatherings, I believe. So this is, uh, you know, a real, I, I think, blow for liberty uh, or, you know, blow against the enemies of liberty, I yes. guess. <laughs> uh, a blow uh, you for know. tyranny. Yeah. A blow to tyranny, yes. <laughs> well, you see, what happened, what happened previously when the court ruled on it the first time, you know, Mr. Mr. John Roberts, the Chief Justice, you know, he's becoming a sort of wobbly conservative these days. <laughs> yeah. So, so he um, went with the, with the liberals and they ruled four to four. So that means the decision of the lower court, which was an, an appeals court, that means the decision stood as yeah. a result. So when... Amy came onto the court, Amy Comey Brad came onto the court. Well, then they had, um, the case was revisited and that's yeah. where we got the decision that came out yeah. against, against Andrew Cuomo and New York and it's damn nonsense. Yeah. And my was understanding it, is- What was the vote? I'm sorry? It was 5-4 this time. Five, five, four. It was a 5-4 decision. decision. Yeah. This time, Roberts joined the left. <laughs> so Roberts he kind, again, of, he kind of revealed he his the colors. Yes, he again joined where the left. Long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, let's yeah. be honest. That's where he belongs. So he's he been, he been be. drifting. He's been drifting for a while now. Even though he, some of his decisions are still what you'll consider on the right, but he kind of drifting. He really is. He's left, yeah. He's really drifting. Well, the the idea that they could, you know, f uh, use something the guise of any kind of uh, of emergency to limit speech is just beyond the pale. I mean, that's the the whole foundation of of. Uh, our check on government itself is our ability to talk with each other and our ability yes. to, to to share our ideas. And, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, whether you agree with a certain religion or any religion at all, yeah. that's not the point. You know, the point is what people want to get together to talk about. That's up to them. And, right. you know, if so it's just it's, it's absolutely terrible to for them to signal out religion and blast them while, you know, essentially elevating their 
political cronies, you know, uh, to, to have essentially elevated rights of speech. Just uh, terrible. And especially, too, when those other groups were actually <laughs> often causing, uh, you know, destroying other people's rights in the, in the process. Thing. You know? yeah. Destroying uh, their property and all kind of stuff. And these people were sitting around and saying, that's okay. You know, yeah. Kamala Harris, who is who if Joe Biden the elevate um, to, to the presidency, um, she'll be the vice president. She has a group that was bailing out some of these people who was doing all this madness on the streets over the summer. She, 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 she supports this. And then, yeah. and then you want to tell me that is okay, but people can't get together and have a religious service to worship yeah. whoever they want to call their God. I may not agree with, I may not agree with them, but that, that's their right. It doesn't matter whether I agree or not. Yeah. This is craziness. <clears throat> Yeah, it's off to awful. Well, speaking of other unprincipled, <laughs> you know, things coming out of the Biden administration, <laughs> um, uh, recently uh, Biden uh, has uh, been making a lot of appointments. And so one of the things that made the news this last week is that he had uh, appointed his uh, uh, White House communication team. And they're all women, which, you know, no big deal if that's if that's who he wants to appoint uh, more power to him. But when he appointed them, he made the statement saying, I am proud to announce today the first senior White House communications team comprised entirely of women. These qualified, experienced communicators bring diverse perspectives to their work and a shared commitment to building the country back better. Um you know, I'm not quite sure what communications directors have to do with building the country back. But aside from that, diverse, I, I mean, the, the whole point is you chose an undiverse group and then somehow they have diverse opinions. I, it's, uh, I, you know, I mean, maybe he chose intellectually diverse people. That, that would be a first for him. But you know, certainly, you know, as far as what really matters to these guys is how people look. He chose a very undiverse uh, appearing group. So I don't know. What do you guys uh, have to say? Chosen not by the content of their character, but by the type of sex organs they have. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because you see what is going on in our society is not the content of your character, just like Tim says. It's not, it's not the call of your conduct. It's not the condition of your competence. None of that matters. Your race matters and your sex matters. Okay, so here's Mr. Biden now. And and no, this this is not surprising. This damn nonsense is not surprising. He was stuck with with um with having to pick a woman of color, which is a non this woman of color thing does really drive me crazy, but that's what maybe that's why the French show, you know. But <laughs> but he was stuck because first he said, Oh, I'm gonna pick a woman as vice president, and then he made his two racist statement, so then he had to get a woman of color. Yeah. And just to remind people, his, his yeah. racist, well, at least one of his racist statements that everybody, mostly everybody's familiar with, if you ain't voting for me, you ain't black. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Imagine that. This old, decrepit, half senile man telling me I ain't black because I ain't going to vote for him. And if God could come down and tell me to vote for him and I'm, and I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> so he, he, this half decrepit, Half seen that man telling me I ain't black. Imagine that. Yeah. But he was stuck with making these kind of decisions. This diverse, this kind of diverse, this kind of diversity. Because he he comes up with this thing about, oh, you know, um, I have to pick a woman. And then when it becomes it has to be a woman of color. And then and then when he have to find his, his communication group, oh, we have to pick women because they're gonna bring some diverse perspective. What the hell does that have to do with the competence? What the hell does it have to do? Nothing, absolutely nothing. But here we go, the left with all their craziness. And if God, if God, if God help us and this man becomes president, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Believe me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, well, judging by the way that they're, uh, uh, you know, governing, there won't be much diversity in our uh, economic depend, uh, our, our economic uh, uh, positions when this is all over. Yes. We'll all be equally poor. <laughs> <laughs> They <laughs> keep these lockdowns going and, you know, uh, go forward with some of their other economic nonsense. Um, but, you know, diversity, that there's other issues as well going on with diversity that, uh, you know, just sort of nonsense uh, uh, it seems to be sort of a religion. But, 
We have uh, the NASDAQ announcing diversity requirements for companies that are listed on their exchange now. Uh, and this is, you know, uh, it, it seems to be following after a California um, diversity requirement that happened later this year. And of course, you know, California, that's where all these things uh, seem to be coming out of nowadays. Um, but uh, uh, California back in September of this year, uh, the governor signed into law uh, a Senate bill uh, that required uh, publicly held corporations in California to achieve diversity on their boards of directors by 2023. Well, it looks like NASDAQ has tried to, I guess they're, they're trying to get ahead of that or something and uh, jump on with their own diversity requirements. But essentially these would be requirements that would uh, ask these boards to, well, not ask, tell these boards that one, they have to give uh, diversity statistics about their board. So that's one thing. And then two, they have to uh, require certain numbers, depending upon the number of board members, they have to have a certain number of diverse people. And so this might mean women or uh, you have to show that you're maybe LGBT or something, or maybe you're, you're uh, you know, or an ethnic diversity or something like that. But, uh, you know, it, of course, there's no diversity in thought necessarily just it's not about what they're thinking it's just about what they look like so i you know it's uh you guys have any thoughts on this well if if i could read from what simon black said about it uh it's it's short and, and to the point the university of pennsylvania's famous wharton school of business analyzed dozens of studies of corporate diversity requirements that specifically demand women on company boards Rigorous peer-reviewed studies suggest, this is in quotes, so this is from the Wharton School of Business, suggests that companies do not perform better when they have women on the board, nor do they perform worse. So Simon says, what a shocker. It turns out that the absence of a Y chromosome makes absolutely no difference in someone's qualifications. Could that possibly be because deep down we're all made up of the same stuff and someone's sex organs and ethnicity are completely irrelevant when it comes to business and finance. Indeed. I just thought that was so perfect. And that Indeed. was about this NASDAQ thing. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. You know, you know, it get back to what was just said, okay? It is not it is not the content of your character, it's not the call of your conduct, it's not the condition of your competence. It's just the condition, it's just your, the, uh, the color of your skin or the sex organs that you possess. You know, when George Wallace was being inaugurated in, as the governor of Alabama, this I think was in 1963, he said, in the most wonderful sudden draw, segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. And that's exactly what is, being hap is happening right now. We're going to have segregation forever. Because these people want to divide us by race, by sex, by class. And they forget all the important things that we, we're supposed to possess, which is character, competence, which is conduct. These are the sort of things that are supposed to drive us forward in life. Our merit and our skills are supposed to determine, determine things. Not our sex organs and not our skin color we possess. Yeah. And, and George Wallace's vision of America is coming true unless we yeah. stop it, unless we do something about it. Well, you know, bringing up George Wallace, that, that does bring up an interesting point, though, because, uh, you know, some of this is is a little bit of reaction to people trying to insert race and gender and other things into into government in the past decades and decades ago. And, you know, it's it's uh, people forget it was government that did that back then. Jim Crow exactly. laws, that was government. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, when you saw the federal government coming in to stop the state governments from uh, doing these things, those were government laws. And I mean, that, that really drives home the point that we need to, you know, it, it's, it's one thing if an individual is irrationally biased against something. Well, okay, they they they're going to pay a price for that in the marketplace. I mean, if you if you limit the number of possibilities that you have to choose from as a business or your customer base or anything, you're, you're literally that 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 is a cost to business, not a benefit to business. Um, but when you mm -hmm. uh, when you put that in government, 
you, you know, there's, there's almost, no, you know, it's really hard to get out of it because you got to get over 50% of people to think the same way, you know, you do. Right. And, and yes. you just, so it's it just, I, you know, it's, it's terrible, but, you know, government gets in decades and decades, generations ago, does this stuff. And now government is doing it again. <laughs> and it's just, you know, wow. I mean, we just never get out of this loop. I mean, legal, legal segregation. Okay. Jim Crow, which is, we call Jim Crow. That lasted for 90 years, 95 years. Yeah. Okay. It only was able to last that long because the full weight of the government was behind it. That's the only reason it lasted. The yeah. marketplace would have, t would have taken care of that in no time. I mean, and I think we spoke about this before. Look at what happened in 1947. In 1947, Jackie Robinson got in, in, into Major, ba major League ba um, Baseball. That was a market at work, not the government. I mean, we had the civil rights movement after that, and it destroyed all, all of Jim Crow, which was a great and fantastic thing for, for the United States and for blacks in, 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 um, in particular. But the marketplace was already showing its power by in Major League Baseball and other areas of our lives at the time. Yeah. And the government came in after. When, and it specifically was able to do that because government didn't have a rule stopping Major League Baseball from doing it. I mean, Jim Crow, you know, if you were a business owner in the South and you said, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm not doing too good competing the way these other guys are, but hey, there's this group of people that are being discriminated against and I could let them come into my shop. You literally couldn't do that. You would be right. shut down and fined. There were all kinds of Jim Crow fines for, you know, I, I, they, they, there were rules about trains and other things where people yeah. literally had to sit in certain areas, regardless of what the business wanted, uh, because they you, you'd literally be fined if you didn't do that. And there were even rules that said who you could uh, uh, essentially uh, marry and other stuff like that in some of these places. Yeah. There were rules yeah. against you you intermingling with uh, people of other groups. That was government. I mean, you know, if, if if some jerk two blocks away doesn't like the color or, you know, choice of, of my partner, that, you know, I, I don't give a crap. But if, if I choose something and the government shows up at my doorstep and says, you know, they're going to throw me in jail, that's a completely other, uh, you know, and, and that really puts the brakes on, uh, uh, you know, destroying these things when government is using force to keep people from experimenting. Exactly. And, 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 and look at um, even the simple thing like public education. In the yeah. South, blacks and whites could not go to the same schools. Uh, that's what, where this whole separate but equal thing came about. Is in 1954 when the court said anything separate is not really equal. Period. There's no such thing. And that's when the Brown decision came out and, and that's what started the destruction of Jim Crow and, and legal segregation. But this is the whole thing. When government does these sort of things, that is why it could last as long as it did. The same thing with, with apartheid in South Africa. Yep. Yep. It's uh, government, uh, you know, a lot of times is uh, <laughs> causing causing a lot more problems than it's, uh, than it's solving. Well, speaking of, uh, you know, sort of knuckleheaded ideas, we're about at that point in our show uh, where... We, we try and wrap up with something ridiculous, uh, our knucklehead noise patrol here, uh, so something ridiculous that either a politician or somebody else in the media has been saying. And uh, this time it is uh, taking it back to the front of our show. It's Governor Cuomo. <laughs> and uh, about a week and a half ago, he was uh, literally in an argument with some reporters. And, you know, maybe we'll see a lot more of that now that, you know, with Trump leaving, uh, probably, uh, you know, maybe maybe some of these reporters will come to their senses and start questioning <laughs> what they're hearing from some of these lefty leaders. Uh, but uh, um, essentially, Governor Cuomo uh, had a question during one of his press conferences that he said, uh, uh, you know, that apparently that uh, people didn't know whether or not their kids were going to be uh, shut out of schools or not in New York. Uh, there was a lot of confusion. And so Governor Cuomo uh, said to the reporter, first of all, let's try not to be obnoxious in your tone. Uh, and then he says, you're 100% wrong <laughs> when he's saying the parents are just confused is what the reporter was saying about whether or not they're supposed to be locked in so the reporter said parents are still confused as, as well he, he kept trying to say and then Cuomo uh, responded again he says they're not confused 
you're confused. Read the law. Read the law and you won't be confused. And he said uh, the schools are open by state law. And then sure enough, uh, uh, the next day, de Blasio closed the schools in New York. <laughs> 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 you know, just, uh, you know, sort of government not even knowing what's going on under yeah. its own, you know, tent. So, so, yeah, the, the right hand doesn't know what the <laughs> left hand is doing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, this is arbitrary government, you know. They're always so arbitrary in their in their thinking, also so arbitrary in the laws they pass. You got Tim, you're right. Life hand and right hand don't know what the hell they're doing. And we are all confused about it. They have no science to back it up, but they're doing it anyway. Because they think it's good for us. You know? They think yeah. it's good for us. These people are trying to save us. God help us if this is how we are going to be saved. <laughs> Lord. Uh-huh. Well, uh, there's a lot of people that are probably uh, thinking right now that we're being saved by Biden coming around the corner. <laughs> Keep mentioning that. I don't know why. Maybe. I mean, maybe unless unless uh, and, and his team of superheroes and his team of superheroes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Who's going to make the sky? Who's going to make the sky blue and all the puppies warmer and, and, and everything yeah. else? And the yeah. ocean will stop rising and all that. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> and COVID yeah. is going to disappear. Yeah, yeah, overnight. Um, I, I do want to congratulate Leon on making it through two shows almost. There's still a little bit of time left without saying a single uh word that is considered to be a swear word by some people. Hallelujah. Uh, he, <laughs> he, he has he has done a very fine job. And uh <laughs> thank you. Too. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> I, you know, I, I must, I must confess, I came close today, but you, yeah, you guys probably didn't realize it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't blame you, Leon. Usually, the stuff, the nonsense we hear out of government is just. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah. some, some, oh, of stuff, some of this stuff that's driving me crazy here, what you wouldn't believe. <laughs> you know, but one, one final thought, you know, to tie it to the beginning of the show is, you know, I think there, there's an issue here too, where you know a lot of people just have this blind faith in GOV. You know, we're talking about faith and. Uh, yes. Government slapping down religion, but I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of secular religion going on around here oh. too, with just oh, the I, faith in I, government. But yeah, if I could just say, I, I think it's the the true, the one uh, God that is being held above the one true God. Um, this is G O V. Yeah, G O V. Yeah, I call it the Almighty Great God Government, yeah. and it is the one true, the one God that is. Um, held in esteem by a good many people, some of whom think they're they're really worshiping the one true God, but but it, you know they just they they're lying to themselves. They really do hold government as the greatest of all the gods that they have, and they have more yeah. than one. Well, yeah. we, we, we've reached the end of the show. <laughs> we just uh, don't have any more time. But thanks so much for joining us for this episode. You can catch more of our episodes at LibertarianCounterpoint.com uh, on public access or uh, uh, Facebook's Libertarian Counterpoint page. Thanks so much uh, for joining us, and we'll see you at the next one.